What's up, everyone? I hope you've been having a good week. It's Friday. We're all excited for that weekend. Maybe you're even planning to get a little creative over the next couple of days. So let's get that inspiration going, that creativity flowing, and start working on a couple of paintings. So, as I'm sure you saw in the video title, I have about three hours to kill. So naturally, let's try to get three paintings done. As usual, I really have no idea what I'm going to be painting. I know that an hour each is pretty tight, so I'm going to have to be working very fast. I'm also planning to just use the palette and the textures and stuff that I build from one painting and kind of carry it through all of them to save that time on the second and the third one. So with that in mind, this first painting is really more about just having fun. Throwing paint down on the canvas, getting a lot of textures, getting a lot of values. I want a nice value range. I want a nice hue variety. All of this is going to be even more important in this session because I'm planning on doing three paintings back to back with no breaks. And since I don't really have an idea for any of them, the more noise and just random chaos that I can get down now is going to help me going forward. I started off building up a lot of colors, focusing on some complementaries and a lot of warms, a lot of cools. I switched brushes a lot to get a lot of texture variation and variety down. And at this point, I'm kind of seeing a city street lined with buildings. We're almost already at the halfway point of the painting, so I do need to start zeroing in on figuring out what exactly it is I'm even looking at. So I decided to go with that. I started using my very chunky mixer brush just to get even more variety and textures in there, some harder edges. I also really need to start adding in some more darks and getting in some shadow shapes, but time isn't on my side and I need to figure out a subject for the focal point. So the obvious answer is to just throw down a big bulbous alien spaceship looking thing. Now I probably only have about 20 minutes left at this point, but I figure if I can get just enough of a focal point down in the spaceship, render it up just enough, your eye will be drawn to it, and as a result everything around the spaceship will look a little bit more complete. Like if you're looking right at the doorway for example, the buildings might look more like buildings instead of just squiggly blobs. I didn't notice this when I was painting it, but looking at it now, the shape language is reminding me a lot of the Halo Covenant vehicles, which is very round and kind of smooth. It's funny how that works sometimes. You don't really know exactly where in your visual library you're pulling things from, and Halo is definitely not the first to kind of take that design language. But nonetheless, it's funny when you stop to analyze your work, you kind of notice these inspirations that you were subconsciously pulling from. Anyways, with next to no time left, I quickly throw down some humanoid figures to make it look like they're all gathering to, I don't know, maybe to greet the alien, maybe to be in fear of the alien, or just stare in awe of the alien. It doesn't matter. It's just some storytelling. You know I'm big on that. With no time to spare, now you're going to see just how much time I get to save utilizing my previous painting as a starting point for this next one. I flipped the image upside down and applied Photoshop's median filter to it. This helps me see some new shapes and designs in it. It's just another way to kind of trick your brain into seeing new things. And almost immediately, I kind of saw like a giant ship next to a dock or a pier of some sort. So I just roll with it. And wow, I gotta say, this one is a perfect example of just how important your first two to five minutes of a drawing or a painting are. Because if you look at where it started, those first big shapes that I put down are literally the painting from start to finish. Nothing big really changed. Now of course it was polished and rendered up more by the end, but seriously those first big shapes I threw down of the boat silhouette and the dock silhouette are pretty much the entire composition. And that's really what I'm always trying to say about the power of speed painting and doing time practice or just doing, you know, throwaway sketches in your sketchbook. Fact of the matter is, the first two minutes of a sketch is going to look the same as the first two minutes of a several hundred hour magnum opus. So the takeaway is, you better get really damn good at those first two to five minutes of your work. Getting back to the painting, I knew that I wanted to 
pretty much retain almost the entire palette from the first one, which I did. I covered up a lot, as you saw, with a lot of very noisy brushes, but I left enough visible to still pull those colors back into the painting. I just wanted to mix up the textures like I normally do. I threw in some more purples and blue hues, and then I knew for sure I wanted to have like darker areas, so I was going to have to go much darker in some areas than I did in the previous painting, really pump up that contrast. And because the idea for this painting came together so much quicker than the first, you can see just how much more kind of visual storytelling I'm able to do. We got the crane in the background, we got this like big fish shark thing hanging in the back. I got this vague looking shop thing in the background that I'm going to try to add some humanoids in at the end. And overall, I get to just have more fun with details in this one, because again, at the very beginning, the image kind of painted itself just off of those first few silhouettes. The idea was planted, the composition was pretty much set in stone instantaneously. I didn't really need to worry that much about a palette. So this one came together really effortlessly, to be honest. And of course, finally, in the last few minutes of the painting, I got to get even more storytelling in. Always, always worried about that storytelling. There's always got to be some sort of focal story point going on. We've got this woman who's either waving goodbye to the boat, or maybe she's trying to run towards it, her man is holding her back or joining her. Don't know, but there's something there. It gets you thinking, I'm happy. Here we are, hour three, final painting, and for this one I decided to do something blasphemous. I'm gonna start a quick sketch first. I know, right? What is this black magic? I gave myself about five extra minutes to throw down a super quick basic two-point perspective grid. I throw down an incredibly basic and primitive looking bipedal robot thing. I'm leaving it super primitive on purpose, that way while I'm painting I could kind of come up with all the details on the fly. It's just been a long time since I've started a speed painting with an actual plan and a sketch, as you've probably noticed, and so, you know, it's time to see if I can do any better now. Once again, I started by using my previous painting as a jumping off point by flipping it upside down and applying the median filter to it. I'm still again going to retain the color palette. I very quickly mix it up using the mixer brush to get a lot of that visual noise and mix the colors together. And while I am using the same palette, I'm going to push that saturation and really pump the contrast up even further. And just like my previous painting, this one came together really quick. All of the important information went down within the first few minutes. And a lot of this is, of course, because I started from a sketch and I also already had the palette. Now, it's of course very obvious to me that starting from a sketch and, you know, proper perspective is obviously the way to go. But as I've said many times on this channel, I'm mostly doing a lot of the stuff to focus on my weaknesses and my weaknesses starting from straight painting. And that's what you've been seeing me do a lot of. This painting in particular is a fun way to kind of see how far I've come using even just a five minute sketch and seeing how much that can improve my work. One of the biggest problems with the first and the second painting was there was no red in the palette. What is this? Red is my favorite color. So naturally I make the robot red, which will make him a very easy focal point, which he already is anyways. Using the lasso tool, I quickly filled out his silhouette with a variety of brushes, getting a bunch of different hues and values and textures, which will all serve as a nice underpainting once I go in and start working out the details of this guy. And from this point, a lot of the brushes that I had been using, especially on the robot, were softer brushes or very textured brushes. So now for some of these final touch-ups that I want to give him, I want to use harder edge brushes or something simple like the hard round brush because it's going to pop out so much more against the contrast of that softness and those textures that it's really going to help bring in the focal point and give the illusion that he's more rendered than he is. By now I'm looking at the clock, I'm looking at the time, and it's late, but I'm having a lot of fun on this one and I'm really liking how it's coming out. So you know what? Let's add another hour to the clock. Let's see how much further we can push this painting. Let's take a look at where it is now at the hour mark, but we're adding another hour to that clock. We're staying up late tonight, boys.
All right, we're in overtime now. I've always mentioned in the speed painting videos that I have no problem working on something longer if I think I could push it further than the time limit I gave myself. And this is a perfect example of one that I think I could push pretty far. At the stage that it's at now, basically everything is figured out. I'm not really gonna be adding any new major elements to it. There's no major corrections or issues that I have to address right now. It's really just gonna be another hour of only rendering it and detailing it out further. It's a great opportunity to see just how much all of the speed painting and overall painting from imagination has boosted my skill. I immediately added a lot more texture with some very big texture brushes and I used a very dark blue because I'm gonna end up painting over that again and it's gonna leave a lot of that dark blue in areas that I don't touch. I think it's gonna add a lot more depth to the background and just more nuance to the overall image. It'll help make the robot stand out even more as well because he's got such different textures than the background. You'll also notice that at this stage of the painting, I'm actually using much smaller brushes. I actually have the painting full screen on my tablet now. For the majority of all of these paintings, I was actually painting super tiny. I just zoomed in on the video that way you guys could see it more clearly. But in reality, for like 80, maybe even 90% of all three of these, I was working with it very small because readability is always the most important thing. And even now that I'm in the finer detailing phase of this painting, you'll notice that I'm really not zooming in because I'm really not interested in making a bunch of brushstrokes that aren't going to contribute to the overall piece. And zooming super far in and painting something very small is a good way to waste time. A lot of the end of this I painted using the hard round brush, even though everything else was very textural. And if you look in the background, that cityscape that I've kind of been working on, you'll notice just how much the hard round sticks out among all that texture and the different edge work. It really makes things pop. The same goes for the robot in the foreground. A lot of the hard round brushstrokes that I used there was actually at 100% opacity. A lot of that bounce light is 100% opacity. And it's creating this contrast between the gradation of using the pressure sensitive brushes and the texture brushes. So the thought is, and my hope is, that all of this is not just creating a lot of visual interest throughout the image to kind of guide your eye to focal point to focal point, but it also makes everything feel more cohesive, which overall makes the image feel like it's been rendered for a much longer time than just two hours. And finally, at the very end, we got to get that last little bit of storytelling in. We put a mechanic working on his mech robot thing. And there you have it, three paintings in. All right, all right, it was actually four hours. You know, I gotta say, since doing these videos on this channel, I can see that I'm learning so much more in different ways too, and not just the technical stuff, but more about myself as an artist. In this case, I don't normally do consecutive imaginary speed paintings like this, but I thought it'd be fun and it'd make a cool video. And it turns out I learned a lot from it, especially sitting here and analyzing and talking about my work. Like looking at the first painting, I'm not particularly satisfied with it and I definitely wasn't at the time, I still think it's the weakest of the three, but it serves as such a foundation for the next two that I actually kind of love it now. It's very interesting to me to see the palette evolve from one to the next, but still basically be the same. It, it really doesn't change up until the third painting, and even then, it's still kind of the same, just a little bit more saturated and a little punchier contrast. Another thing that I'm noticing is my texture work and overall design sensibilities and philosophies, I guess you'd say. I could see them transferring from painting to painting and also evolving from one piece to the next. And I don't know, that's really interesting to me because again, I don't, I don't typically do back-to-back -back paintings like this, especially where I kind of cannibalize my previous painting to start the next one. It's very interesting, and I can see myself doing this a lot more. I think it'll open even more doors, and it'll probably be another tool to add to the speed painting toolbox, because honestly, this was fun. And by the third painting, 
hell, I think it's one of the best speed paintings I've ever done from imagination. So yeah, this is definitely one to keep and an exercise that I would highly recommend you go out and give a shot yourself. That's all I have for today. As always, I hope you loved this as much as I did. If you did, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what your favorite painting is or just anything in general. I'm all ears. I hope you all have a great weekend. Go out, have some fun, and then why don't you come home and paint something? Alright, that's it. I'll see you all next week. Thank you.